from the Pasuk of Venik Dashti. I may I be sanctified among the people. People, the, the uh, discussion in the Chazal is that that is a mitzvah to command us to even allow ourselves to be killed, to die on Kiddush Hashem, hmm. if we are forced, compelled to serve some other God, let's say, right? Hmm. To renounce our God. God forbid, That's good. Then, uh, then uh, to even die for that. That is from one pasuk of Venik Dashti. That's one pot topic. The other one is the reason to forbid chametz and honey in korbanot. Mm-hmm. You never put honey and chametz in korbanot except for. Yeah. That's a prohibition. Except for. Prohibition, no chametz on on uh, on korbanot. When you have a mincha, for example, the, the grain offerings, you never bring it chametz. It is done as a matzah or a, or unleavened, right? Sometimes fried, sometimes baked, sometimes right, sometimes even boiled. But why is that true for all cases that there is no chametz in mincha? Probably. I don't know. Yeah. Do you hear the question? No. Mincha, be like, the mincha that is green Corbin, is, Corbin never, is never chametz, except for, the Torah says, I'll, no, no chametz on the... On the mincha? On the mincha. Yeah, no chametz always. It's unleavened flour, barley. But, except for... Um, two. Except for two. Pesach? No, Pesach. No, Pesach. No, Pesach. What? Shavuot. 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 There are two breads that are brought, which are nice risen breads, two loaves. Uh, that is mincha. Mincha of a special offering on Shavuot. And one more. Tick-tock. Tick-tock. But it's not in Shemini. Shemini. No. No, no. We're not talking. We're talking about even communal or personal. Anybody who brings a mincha uh, must not make a chametz, except shtei alechem is one. And I heard that person who person whose life is in danger, danger. And was saved. Yeah, from, yeah. from yeah. danger. The people who bench go now. Yeah, I was going to say toda. The people korban toda, mincha toda. He brings a korban toda, right. and he brings a mincha. Right. That mincha is half. Half chametz and half not chametz. He brings like 30 loaves or something like that. 20 of loaves. 10 of one and 10 of another. What's that? 40 loaves. 40 loaves. Okay, 20 of 20, something like that. 30 and 10. 30 and 10. 30 and 10. 30 and 10. Okay. So the chametz is among them. Correct. 30 is chametz and then 10 is not. 10 is not? So those are the exceptions. Okay, but that's. So he talks about the reason why does the Torah does not want chametz and dvash and honey. In Korbanot, that's that topic, and then the Indian of Zichron Trua in Shofar yeah. on Rosh Hashanah, and the difference between the halachos of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Yeah. Why he says he's trying to determine the difference between the holidays of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. That's another topic. 
And then the reason for sitting in the sukkah, in this pasuk, in this parrot, and the explanation of the commandment, and trying to discuss whether the we're talking about the hovering clouds of glory that were the sukkah, or that they sat in sukkos, actual physical sukkos, right? It doesn't matter about what does sukkah represent. Is it I put your forefathers in the sukkah because I put your forefathers in the sukkah for 40 years when they were in the midbar? What does it mean I put your forefathers in sukkah? I put your forefathers under the clouds of glory. That's a sukkah, you know. Or I put them into shacks. You also it's an interesting machloket, and the Ramban has something to say about that. So, give me a choice. And then the Trua. Zichron Trua and Rosh Hashanah, and the difference between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And the topic about the, when one is forced to, to, to sacrifice one's life yeah. for God, and the issue of Chameitz and Dvash in Korbanot mm. and the mitzvah of sukkah. What do you want? Okay. We could do all four. Yeah. We we'll have time. Which Wait. is the first one? Uh, when is the first one? Zichron Trua. All right. Zichron Trua. Zichron Trua. Let's see. It might be short. Who knows? Zichron Trua is on 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 Perik Chadaled. Perik 24. Mm. Um, I'm sorry, Perik 23. Yes, yes. Chapter 23. How did you know? Chapter 23. I was reading this. I see. <laughs> well, you're a wise guy. <laughs> Chapter 23, Pasuk 43. 2340. 2340. You made it easy for us. 2343. What? 43. No, I got that. I got that wrong. It's Mitzvah Sukkah. That's Mitzvah Sukkah. I got it wrong. Uh, 24. 24. 24. That's 24. 24. 23. 24. 23. 24. Yeah. By the Bera Hashem, by the Bera Hashem, Moshe Leimor, the Bera El Bnei Yisrael Speak to the Jewish people, saying, Bachodesh Hashvi'i on the seventh month, Bechad Bachodesh on the first day of the month. Ye, seventh month from Nisan, right? Mm-hmm. Even though we call that Rosh Hashanah, that's really the seventh month of the year. Ye, ye, Yelachem, Shabbaton. That day shall be for you a Shabbaton, a, right. a Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Why does he call it Shabbaton? I don't know. Zichron Trua, a memory, we'll see what that means in a moment, a memory of blowing, of Shofar, Mikra Kodesh. A, um, a declaration of holiness for the day, right? Okay? Don't do any work on that day, and you shall sacrifice on the Lashem. Okay? Then, the next pasuk, another commandment. However, on the tenth day of this month, of this seventh month, Yom HaKippurimu, it's on Kippur, so the first day, and you got the tenth day. Mikra Kodesh Yelachem, declaration of holiness is should be for you. Vinitem et nafshotechem, and you shall uh, torment your spirits. That means, you know, to fast and not to eat and drink and other things. Vikraftem Yishel Hashem, and also then you bring an offering to God. Vikom lachalot asu, ve'etzim ayom azeh, ki yom kippurim hu lechaper alechem, v'tnei Hashem lokechem. It's this day, it's a day to atone for you before God. And so on and so on and so on and so on, right? Doesn't say anything about shofar, by the way, of course, no. on Yom Kippur, right? Even though we always grow shofar at the end of the day. So the Ramban is curious about these two things. And what does Zichron Trua, the whole idea of the memory of Trua, what is Zichron Trua? A, a memory of blowing. Tell the people to blow. What is this yeah. memory? Zichron Trua. So that is so discussed not, by many, many people. Not the same the Ramban and blow. them. What? That is not the same that blow and shofar. That yeah, it doesn't say blow, it says re- zichron trua. Right. Okay, so 2323 23 is how it goes. 23, 
Akhbar Sur. Right? Wow. Very long Rabban there, and uh, the first one on its own. And it says, So, Zichrom. Where is it? Zichrom. 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 Where is that? In the middle of the point. Oh, Kufnun Beit to Dalit. Kufnun Beit to Dalit. Oh, I see, I see, I see. The middle of page Kufnun Beit. Great. Where it says, "Rememory or commemoration of blowing." Do you see yes. it somewhere? It's in the middle of a big paragraph. Okay. Zichron Shua. Psuke zichronot upsuke shofarot lezich lizkor lachem akedat yitzchak shekarev tachat ha'ayim. Rashi on Rashi. What does he mean? According to Rashi, zichron, a memory of Shua, that you are trying to remind God yeah. that He should remember for us a merit of. Yes, yeah. Okay. Of the Abraham Avinu doing uh, the Akeda of Yitzchak because the Ayel is a horn and we use the Ayel's horn for blowing. So to uh, remind Hashem of that deed, of that readiness to do the deed, and therefore God should favor us on that day, right? Because in both, you know, we have Malchuyot, Zichronos, and Shofaros. We have three groups of blessings in the Shmonesri of Musaf on Rosh Hashanah. The first one is Malchuyot. That does not mention Abraham Avinu. But then, Zichronot, Shofarot, Zichronot. I mean, Zichronot, Shofarot. And there are three, there are ten different phrases, ten different uh, psukim that are quoted in Zichronot. And in Zichronot, we say, please remember for us what Abraham Avinu did, and so on and so on. And then Shofarot, is that what mentioned there? Yeah, yeah, I know. But is Abraham, why, why, is the, why does Rashi mention that one when there is no, do you have Rashi there? Is that Rashi in there? Um. Yeah, it is. So 23, 23 24. Why, why would Rashi say that? Because what does Rashi say? In the additional service. The Ramban of, quoted him now and said that in the additional service of Musaf, there is Zoch Zichronot yeah, and Shofarot, reminding us or reminding God of the Shofar. So I'm, I'm yeah. asking where is yeah. the. Is there, is there an actual mention of. Okay, that Yitzchak in the Shofarot bracha? I may be, well, I'm just surprised. I, I well, may be wrong. Well, there could, could be. Why? Was, was, was the, uh, blowing of the, uh, yeah, but it doesn't say blowing, does it? Does yeah. it? I, I, I just, so I need a mazer, I don't know. Do mm -hmm. I? It said C in volume 1, page 268. Yeah, that. Note 318, but it, uh, that is all. Rashi. Zichron. Zichron Shua. Zichron Psuke Zichronot and Psuke Shofarot. Rosh Hashanah Lamed Beit. It's in the Gemara, right? Rosh Hashanah. Lizkor Lachem Akedat Yitzchak Shekarev Tachat Ayo. Tachtav Ayo. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the, the, I have to look at the Maxer. But anyway, so the Rashi says yes. The Rashi did say that both the Zichronot and the Shofarot of the Musaf, the additional service, mention and remind God of this merit, and therefore it's called Zichron Trua. Okay? Because after all, in Shofarot, at least, it's Trua. Right? So now, Rashi says, Ramban says, V'hayatzarich harav lahavi gam psukei hamalchuyot min hamedrash, shelo yitachin sheyazkir hakatuv bepsukei hazichronot v'shofarot v'lo yazkir hamalchuyot. Huh? So what? Why? Why would that be? Uh, everyone, was, everyone was the first one to. I don't know. The Kvar Dashu Atam the Psukim the Pasuk Mi Pasuk by Yalachem the Zikaron the Pnei Hashem. And we know, right? 
that blowing the shofar in the in the right. time of need is something to have Hashem remember us. So the zikharon makes sense. She'ein tamud lomar ani Hashem elokechem. Oh, that Pasuk 98 is, you notice that that Pasuk does, you have to look at footnote 98 there, by the way, that Pasuk that he quoted, you have to finish off the Pasuk. That Pasuk has mm-hmm. both mm-hmm. those remarks. Mm-hmm. You understand? So everybody asks, if you say, blow the horns when you are in trouble so that this will be for you a reminding, a remembrance before God, your God. I am your God. Uh, what is this I am your God added to the Pasuk? It doesn't say anything, right? Of course, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. You are our God. What do you have to say that for? So the Gemara, the Chachamim ask that question. Why is Ani Hashem Elokechem added to the Pasuk? So they say the following. Ella, this, this teaches you that every place where it is said, Zichronot, Zikharon, to remember before God, everywhere it mentions remembering, then you put also the Malchuyot, you mentioned God's kingdom, right? Mm-hmm. So if we're going to, so Rashi, he's saying, it was inappropriate to only mention Zichonot and Shofarot as the places where we re- are remembered before God, because then Malchuyot would, should also be included, but because every time you remind yourself before God, you also would mention him as your king. I'm not sure how strong a question it is, I mean, but Rashi was concentrating on where Rabbi the Tzitzak is mentioned, not... Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Aval. However, I believe, the Ramban says, Kolze Asmachta Midivrehem. Really, this is all an asmachta means that we don't learn it directly from that Pasuk. It's just a, you know, they, they want to use the idea and they have an idea and they say, well, you know, that Pasuk sounds like it might suggest this, but you don't really learn it from there. Mm-hmm. So now he's gonna talk about what he thinks. Umafarashamru. Meaning, meaning to go to the place where they blow the shopara. We are not to go to the place where they recite this service without the blood. blood. If you have a choice, if you have yes. a choice, you have a shofar and you have a place where there's a there's a shliach tzibur davening, you know, with a tzibur. Which way do you go? Where will you go? It's like the rabbi asked us to yeah, the yeah. 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 Right? So he says, if you have shofar to use and or if you have a davening to do, which would you do? So they say that you should go to the place where they shofar because that's Mina Torah. Yes, that's the right up. So and the other one is the Rabbana. That's interesting because yeah. not everybody agrees that. that or maybe it's with Sibor, it's not the Rabbana. Lo tzricha da'avagav da'havadar ha'safek. Meaning, meaning, what do you mean by suffix? That there might be a, there might be a, a shofar, you mean? In other words, you might, what is the suffix that maybe when I go there they will have already gone home? I see. In other words, he may be certain that if he goes to a certain place, there are going to be people davening. And therefore, he's going to be able say with the davening. But if he goes to a place where there's a shofar, maybe they already blew it. There's not going to be anything. So, in other words, on, on the one hand, shofar is more important than davening, so you should go to the shofar. But what if you're in a special situation 
and if I go to the place where there's a shofar, I might catch them. Mm -hmm. If I go to a place where I'm going to daven, I definitely will catch them. I'm here. I'm here in the shul, right? Let's mm -hmm. see. Right? So I know they're davening. I could daven with them. But if I run two, three blocks away from here, I know that they will probably blow shofar, but I might go there and miss the whole boat. Mm -hmm. Then I will not be able to daven either because they will be finished with that. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do? So they say that... When he's stepped out in... in well, the that you should still go to the shop, to the shofar. Still go to the shofar, even though it's a subject, even though it's a doubt. Aval, zichron trua, kimo yom trua yelachem. Yomar, what does he mean by zichron trua, memory of trua? Yomar, shenaria biyom hazeh, that we should blow on this day, v'yelanu zikaron lifnei Hashem, and it shall be a memory before God. Kimo shenemar, there's another we should parenthetically mention that elsewhere in the Torah which is in in Parshat in, in, uh, in Bamidbar 10th Perak, 10th Pasuk there's a mention that if the people of Israel are attacked or they're besieged you know, by an enemy or they have other troubles like uh, famine and and starvation or uh, no rain, things like that, and they want to ask God for help, they shall take these chatzotrot, which are not shofar. They're kind of trumpets. silver trumpets, and they will blow them. Mm -hmm. Moshe was um, commanded to make trumpets, two trumpets. And, and when the people ever, forever, will have troubles, they should blow those shofarot, and daven, I suppose, right? And Hashem will remember them and save them from their troubles. So in this case, when we blow, when we blow shofar, the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, we are doing a similar thing to remind God of us. But in the case that we blow the, the trumpet, not the shofar. On Rosh Hashanah, I suppose. Rosh Hashanah. No, but in the case of... of, 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 of oh, you mean in uh, regular man, troubles? Yes, troubles. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Okay, I don't know. But, but he, you know, it was Rashi had mentioned... Zichron, Trua, not the blowing, right? But mentioning the psukim mm -hmm. in the davening of Zichronot and Shofarot, mentioning Yaqeda uh, Yitzchak and so on to remind God. Mm -hmm. The Ramban says, no, 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 that doesn't make sense. That's not, that's just an asmachta that we should have those psukim in the Musaf. The real mitzvah is to blow Shofar. And why is it called Zichron, Trua? Because when you blow, you, you are remembered before God, like the Chatzotot are remembered. So, so far, so good. Ubavur. Ubavur. Shamar sham ubi yom simchat chem umo adechem utkatem bechatzotot alotechem vazirchein sham lechem. And because it says in that same place about the chatzotot, that when you're in trouble, you blow them. And also on your holidays mm -hmm. and on your festivals, you shall blow yeah. them on, upon your offerings, upon your sacrifices, right? Vekan tzivam betruah stam Mm -hmm. And here, the commandment is given on this holiday only, of Rosh Hashanah, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a general, gen generic, generic thing about all of your holidays you shall blow over your, over your offerings. Here, on Rosh Hashanah, he gives a commandment specifically to blow. Why? I mean, if you, if you have a holiday, then you're supposed to blow. So why, you said to all why, of why do you have to mention Rosh Hashanah? Kippur? Right? Why do you have to do that? He says, no, it's only on the Rosh Hashanah. Why? Why is it only on the Rosh Hashanah? Why is Ah, the difference is that in all the other holidays it said, you shall take and blow to God over your sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Right? So that means on Sukkot you do it and on Pesach you do it and on Shavuot. Correct. But this time on Rosh Hashanah there's a commandment Blow, period. Period. Seven. And then it says, and on this day you bring sacrifices. So it's a different kind of blowing, right? The other one is a blowing over the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. This is a blowing as a mitzvah by Seven. itself, mm -hmm. and sacrifices separately, right? Ah, this has got to be shofar this time because this is in Vayikra. And Bamidbar is when he's talking about trumpets. The trumpets don't exist now, right? Mm -hmm. So he's saying that it must be shofar. 
Vistam kol tshuva v'shofar he. How does he know that? I don't know. And every the, the, the general remark when you say to blow the sound, it's not trumpets. Trumpets are special. He thinks in those days it was understood that when the Torah says blow, it meant blow in a horn. Right? Okay. Nice I, guess, I guess that's the way. Well, yeah. yeah. Kemoshen yamar va'avarta shofar tshuva. Where it said that, it said that in chapter... Oh, oh, that is, I think, in in um, in Yovel, right? Chav hey, Tet, right, right. Mm-hmm. I think but that's the case of the case of Chalel. Chavta Shofar is Bukhala Tzachem, Chav Hey Dror, right? The the Karta Dror Bukhala is Chav Hey Twenty Four. I think so, right? But in the case of Chalel, after Matan Torah and and yeah, forty nine established Yovel, Chavta Shofar. What we establish. Uh, the Ochel Moed and, and the Levites were blowing. singing and blowing. There was not a trumpet of, of, of silver or something? On, on, uh, on, the, on yeah. the kind of sacrifices, yeah. yeah. On the holidays of the sacrifices, they blew. That is the mitzvah on the Chatzat Shof, yes. But that is starts in, in Bamidbar, about all the holidays. Here in Vayikra, which is earlier, there's no Chatzat Shofs don't exist yet. Mm-hmm. And God said, on Rosh Hashanah, I want to give you a specific mitzvah, to blow. To blow what? The chatzot yeah. don't exist. To sure. blow a horn. And he's bringing a proof that later on in this parsha, it says that on the 49th year, after seven cycles of seven, when we have Shnita, seven times, the 49th year is a jubilee Jubil. year. Mm-hmm. A jubilee year, you shall blow a shofar, tshuva. Mm-hmm. Two, two chapters away from where we are. So you see that blowing, trua is with a shofar. So our thing is also with a shofar, right? Okay. okay. And it's not the one where the sacrifices are done together with blowing, which are the trumpets, but there is a shofar, it's a special mitzvah, not on sacrifices. Okay? So far, so good? Okay. Philo pirusha katuv. Ta'am ha mitzvah azot. Lama ha And now he's wondering, what's the, what's the reason? to blow on the shofar, on Rosh Hashanah. Special mitzvah. What, why do we do that? I don't know if it's the Pasuk doesn't explain that. True, Sorry? True admira sadim, ki admira shorechadim. The lama, oh, I'm just reading. What, where do you get that? I don't that? Say, I have a note here. Oh, a note, a footnote? No, my own, my, my own. Oh, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm, I imagine that's what he's going to do. The lama nitztarich zichron, zikaron lifnei Hashem v'yom hazei yoter mishari. I mean, why do you have to be remembered before God on this day more than any other day? Listen, today on uh, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Chodesh, E.R., I also want to be remembered before God. Why, why is it uh, only on Rosh Hashanah that there's this special mitzvah to be remembered before God with a shofar? Why is it even a holiday? Why is Rosh Hashanah a holiday? He's asking, what's the Torah say? The Torah says, on the first day of the seventh month, you shall declare a holiday and blow shofar and bring a fast sacrifice. So it doesn't say anything about why. What, what is it to commemorate? Doesn't say anything. Mm-hmm. The Torah doesn't say it's Yom Adin. Mm-hmm. The Torah doesn't say it's the beginning of a of a year when you get judged. It doesn't, it doesn't say anything, right? Mm-hmm. So, so not only is the shofar enigmatic, the holiday is enigmatic. What's it all about? Good good question, right? If you read the Bible, it just says that's a holiday. Period. Mm-hmm. That's all it says, right? On Yom Kippur it says it's a holiday, Yom Kippur, because today you're going to fi- be atoned before God. So I'm calling it Yom Kippur. Okay, good, right? And Sukkot, it explains why. You're doing Sukkot. Shavuot, it doesn't explain either, by the way. Pesach, it does explain, right? So everything is fine, but on, your, on Rosh Hashanah, it just says, this day is a holiday for you. Bring a sacrifice. Blow the shofar. Don't do any work. Next, I'm going to talk to about Yom Kippur. All right? Mm-hmm. So he's asking, what's this holiday anyway? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm. That's interesting. Mm. Because the Torah goes on to explain that Yom Kippur is coming, then the Rosh HaKodesh near Esh, Bo Yedim Lefanav Yitbarach. So it seems. Where is that? The Tur Mosif Teva Li, near Eli. Right, it seems to me. Aki Sotenu Ikar Shikach, Rosh Hashanah. She came to Drasha Rosh Hashanah, Lashon Rabbeinu Hu Yirmoz Shibo Yedin. It it sounds like there's a hint. Mm-hmm. Very interesting, right? It's a hint 
because 10 days from now is Yom Kippur, and this is the beginning of that month of Yom Kippur, in, is in, therefore it is a hint that this month and this day is going to be participating in judgment. Now, I don't know. Okay, very nice, sweet, but I don't, I mean, how convincing is that? Why doesn't the Torah say so? So we'll see in a moment. He's going to judge the nations. Yes. He's quoting a, pers- a pasuk from Eo. Okay, there are many psukim, he quotes here, the Shavel, many psukim that mention, don't remember my sins, don't remember my misdeeds, speaking to God, right? And on this day, do remember my good deeds. Right, right. So the remembering is is a um, is a theme to ask someone to remember or not remember is a theme that is appropriate at judgment time. At judgment time, disregard or please remember. Those are the things that are mentioned when you talk about deen. So therefore, zichron trua. Remember this, the pasuk said zichron trua, mm-hmm. memory mm-hmm. of a trua or by a trua. So when is that again? Um, so the final year, Kiboy, Kiboy, the name, Barosh Hashanah, Yeshev, Yeshev, the Kisei, the Shofet Atzedek. On this day, on Rosh Hashanah, <coughs> God will sit on His throne. Uh, the judge, the, the, the judge, the righteous, righteous judge. judge. Ba'acharei came, ba'aseret ayamim, Yisa lepesha avadav. And on the tenth day, He will forgive the crimes of His servants. Ramaza katuv. And this is a remez, in, uh, just a hint in our Pasuk, and it became known to the Jewish people from the mouth of Nevi'im and our four holy fathers. Who are they? So why? Why? One moment, I'm going to read it. Ad Moshe Rabbeinu Adayin Hu Biyadeinu Kabbalah Mepursam Batalmud. Whatever, you know, the Ramban has a long drasha for Rosh Hashanah. He's quoting all the time here from this drasha. I have a the text, Kitvei Ramban. But anyway, but so why, why, why is it that, that in the course of the next ten days he forgives our translation for? Why not forgive one only only one day? Why well, he said it's in the ten next days? Why he, he takes so long to forgive us? <laughs> in ten days. Yeah, in these ten days. Maybe I he's think waiting. You're standing in for God on the Rosh Hashanah. You got the judgment, and you say, "Please remember my good deeds. To don't remember my bad deeds." So he says, "Okay, I'll give you a chance to see how you behave." So in the next ten days, he watches you. Why not and 11 days or 12 do. days? I don't know. I think this is my opinion. If I made 22, you would say, why 22, why not yes. 10? Okay, but in 10 days, yeah. he gave us the Aserah uh, Libro, 10 commandments. So that's the way that he's, he, he said that he, is, he's, he sits upon the throne as the righteous judge. Righteous. So that means, hey, I have this transgression for Eliyahu, but... This it belong to the first uh, commandment. How how you explain that you brought this first commandment, Eliyahu? Okay, Hashem, da 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 da. This is the second one, and I have to go every single day to explain him why I brought the ten commandments. There, there is no other reason I, I I found in this. So a way of a way of atoning for every one of the commandments that you might have transgressed. Is that what you're saying? I got you. Okay. No. Nice idea. Okay. I'm far from your. I, no, no, no. I think it's a very good <laughs> idea. It's a very sweet idea. Why not? Okay. So Valderich. So so far, 
it, it's, a, it's a little difficult to understand, but of course, I mean, the truth is it's difficult anyway. The Torah says you should make a holiday on Rosh Hashanah, you should blow a shofar, and it's called a memory of shofar, memory shofar, zichron shofar, and you should bring a sacrifice. Why? What is, what is a shofar to do with this day? Well, and idol. why is this a day anyway? And what kind of a day is it? The idol had, had a horn. Yeah, so... Yeah, but, but why is it? Who said that this is a judgment day? I mean, that's what he, the Ramban is trying to determine. What's the how, how do you know that the judgment is done on Rosh Hashanah in the first place? So he says that is done because that is presumed. It's assumed because Rosh Hashanah is coming, and the, the Torah says nothing about judgment, right? But it does say that on the tenth of that month there's Yom Kippur, which is a day of atonement. So we get a hint from that that 10 days prior to that in this month is when God sits on judgment and then he'll forgive during the 10 days ending the forgiveness on Yom Kippur. I don't know why you have to assume that but okay, because it happens to be on the same man. It's a remit, he says. It's a hint in the Torah. And then when the hint in the Torah says zichron trua, we know that zichron, the word remem memory is commonly used when you stand before a judge. Please remember that I'm a poor guy. Please remember that I did good things. And please don't remember my bad deeds and so on and so on. So zikharon, the theme of zikharon, also makes sense in a judgment day. So that is also a hint that Rosh Hashanah is a judgment day. Zikharon Chua. By the way, the famous, I think he knows very well that there's a famous uh, derivation on the legal remark that when you have Shabbos, if Rosh Hashanah is on Shabbat, you do not blow mm -hmm. shofar mm -hmm. in right. Mansi, right? In the Beit HaMikdash they did, but we don't blow the shofar on Shabbat. Why? How do you know you're not supposed to blow? The Torah says blow. Why don't you blow on Shabbat, right? So the answer is that it says zichron trua, the memory of blowing. But there are some days, like Shabbos, where you just have a memory of the blowing. You don't blow. Right? So that's a completely different use of the word memory. Right? Because here the Ramban is talking about memory of every Yom Kippur is called Zichron Trua. Meaning, it's a Trua for remembering before God. No, no, not, not a remembering of Trua when you don't do it. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's a ironic, right? Zichron Trua for the Shabbos thing is called a memory of the blowing instead of real blowing. And stand me um, on Charles. So that is not because you are carving yeah, exactly. yeah, and Yes. I'm not sure what, what you're explaining. Um, the word zichron trua. Um, I'm talking about this word, word zichron trua. Is, uh, is, is the expression zichron trua used? Yeah, why is the expression zichron trua mentioned? Right. So there's a Gemara that says that we learn from the word zichron trua but there are some days, like Shabbos, when you don't blow, even though you should blow on Rosh Hashanah, you don't really blow. And you still provide the commandment of Zichron Trua because Zichron Trua means a memory of blowing. Whereas, that is not mentioned in the Ramban so far, right? But our Ramban here is talking about Trua used for remembrance before God. It has nothing to do with the memory of Trua that, that, that isn't taking place. It's a Trua that you are blowing, even when you will do blow, you're doing a blowing of remembering yourself before God, asking Him to remember you. It's a different meaning of the word zikharon. Do you know what I mean? Yes? Yes. Does it follows? Yes. I mean, yes. It's, a, it's a double meaning of the word zikharon, that's all. Valder Chaimet, which is always impossible to understand, just right. about. The Ramban is going to now say something mystical, Kabbalistic. Beautiful. You like this, right? Yes, I like it. <laughs> Trua is the thing that has always been supporting us and come in, in, in help for us <coughs> and our forefathers. Shene'emar, Ashrei Ha'am, Yodei, Yodei Trua. Happy is the nation who know or understand the Trua, the blowing. 
וכעניין שכתוב תשועה, תשועת מלחמה כי השם איש מלחמה אם כן יהיה אם כן יום תשועה יהיה לכם שיהיה היום לתשועה לנו וכן זיכרון תשועה מקרא קודש שיהיה בזיכרון התשועה לפיכך הוא מקרא קודש לא הוצרך להזכיר שופר well that's another matter כי השופר רמז ביום ביום והתשועה בו I don't understand the word והנה הוא יום דין רחמים לא תשועת מלחמה It's not a true of war, it's a true of somehow of compassion in judgment. But in this way, it's clear that it's a true of. What is it called? She was given by the Kabbalah by the Lord of God, the Israel, the Romim, and the Moshe of God, she called true of, she was given to her and she was given to her. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but the trua is mentioned, but not tkia. Well, tkia hi hazikaron, uhu ha-shofar, ba trua kishma. I don't uh, get it. Meishaya shihi kulula min ha-rachamim, tkia lefanea v'achareha. Yofich ha-chamar v'yodei trua, ki v'tzdaka yarumu, ki tifer tuzamu ata. הנה זה מבואר כי הכל תלוי בתשובה, אלא בראש השנה מתייחד במידת הדין ומנהיג עולמו עם הכיפורים במידת הרחמים, והוא אמר מלך יושב על כיסא דין, ושם היום דין רחמים. mercy in judgment. And from what we've said, you will understand Tam HaKadu B'Masaot Shua Yitkiu L'Masayhem U'Vakil Al-Kahal Al-Titkau Titkau M'Panecha K'Tam K'Nei Hashem V'Osei Ra V'Vakil T'Kohel V'Takahal N'Emar Shuv Hashem R'Vot This is over my head. תם ויהי בישוב המלך תזה בשי יום יחד עשרת הימים שבין ראש השנה ליום הכיפורים ירמוז לעשרת ספירות. Oh no, goodness, you like that also, the ספירות. כי ביום הכיפורים יתעלה בהם ויקבע השם צורת במשפט. כידוע בקבלה, גם זה, גם יש בזה עוד בשמיים שהחודש הזה מזלו מאזניים, כי בו פלס ומאזני משפט להשם. גזורו with the Zoroastrian uh, symbols of the different constellations for each month is a scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judgment. Judgment. So it's a sign, a symbol, even though that's not a Jewish uh, business, but anyway, they, the fact that they have uh, stars in the image of the sky that have like a shape of a scale, so when it comes on that month, that it coincides with the idea that Hashem is judging. For the scale, right? Guilty, innocent. Hmm. I, uh, hmm. yeah. That is the same that uh, in horoscopes will say that about the uh, about uh, Sagittarius, something like that. It's connected. To it. Because it's in the same time, when, of course, uh, Yom Teruwa and, and, and uh, Yom Kippur. It's, it's, a, it's a scale. In the scale, yeah. It's, yeah. A, scale. It's, a, this, it's a constellation uh, or, 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 a, or a shape that they saw over the horizon. You know, all the astronomers, yes. astrologers have these... Uh, uh, as the, as the world turns, different star formations are seen right. over the horizon. 
So they noticed different patterns and they made pictures of them. You know, one of them is a is a sheep, and another one is a scale. Pizza is a scale. Is it story says a scale? Yeah. What do I know? But he says so. Yeah. Right. So I, I I didn't understand the last part. Okay. So, but we had at least something out of it. It's ten after. Can we do a whole topic in the next five minutes? Which one? Which one? The the Dvash and the Chametz or Sukkah in Ananea Kavod or Sukkot Mamash? Ananea Kavod. I'm going to do that one. Perik Chav Gimel 2343. 2343, and in the Ramban, page 170. Kuf Samach. 2343. Yeah. So he says, Kibasukoto Shafti. Right? Yes. That's what we're looking about. Kibasukoto Shafti. I want you to sit in the second because I made them sit in the Anane Kavod. So Rashi says, Anane Kavod, even though it is only one opinion of two. Right, and right, and the Ramban says, I think that's right. Al derech hapshat, kitziva she yedu and darotet kol maaseh Hashem agadol asher asayim ma'im lafli. Wants them to know the miracles that he did. Right, so Ananei Kavod is one of the miracles he conducted them. She shachan otam be Ananei Kavod kvodo kasuka that he he hovered over them with a with a his glory its clouds of glory like a suka over their heads. Kinyan shenemar uvara Hashem kol. Al kol machon hartzion v'al mikra eha anan yomam v'ashan v'noga ish lahava laila ki al kol kavod chafa v'sukati ye letzel yomam mecherek. This is a pasuk from from which now? Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah. Right, and he uses the word the the hovering of God with with uh, clouds and so on, with fire and uh, and smoke. And he calls it sukkah, chafa sukkah, right? That he hovers on a sukkah. So umipnei shekvar pirei shanan Hashem aleihem yomam v'amu odeish laila. In their coming out of Mitzrayim, it does say that Hashem was over them, right, with a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. Amar stam kiba sukkot shafti. So therefore, he mentions now plainly in the sukkot plural. Because there's two kinds. There's a cloud during the day and a fire at night. So Sukkot means the hovering of God over them in these two ways. How do you like that? We usually say Sukkot means the many Sukkot that we sit in. Yeah. But he's saying it's the Sukkot, the two right. kinds of Sukkot that Hashem put over us. Okay? Mm-hmm. All right? Ki ba Sukkot to Shafti, he says, right? Yomam ba Shumal Ayla, Amar Stam, Ki ba Sukkot to Shafti. I think that's very... Cute. Okay. Kodi. I made for him, for them, two kinds of ananei kavod. Sukkot. I kavodil sukkot lahagenoyim to protect them during their travels in the midbar. Vihine siva mitchilat yom mot hachama b'zichron yitziat misrayim bechodsho umoado, and he commanded this in the beginning of the summer. In the beginning, to remember Yitzhak Mitzrayim. In the beginning. Oh, oh, that's our springtime Pesach. Mm-hmm. In the mm-hmm. beginning, we want to remember Yitzhak Mitzrayim in that month, meaning in the Chodesh Aviv, in the, what you just now did. Mm-hmm. Even though that's not, it wasn't the beginning of the summer here because it was so cold, but yeah. in Eretz Yisrael, it's the beginning of the summer. Yitzhak Mitzrayim Bechot Show, Uva Moado, Vetziva Mizichon Hanes Hakayam, Hana Asalahem, Kol Yemei Amidatam, Bamidbar, Vetzchilat Yemei Akshamim. And he wanted them to remember the other side, Atsukas, right? That he wants them to remember them the the miracle that persisted with them all the days of their staying in the Midbar, Dafka in the beginning of the winter and the time, right? In other words, in the beginning, in the springtime, he wanted them to remember Pesach because that's when it happened, and springtime, the beginning of bright sunshine, the beginning of happiness, right, and so on, right? But after they left, they went through the Midbar for 40 years, during difficult times, hard times, you know, so on and so on. So he wanted that, and Hashem protected them with the Anei Kavod. So he chose the day for remembering that in the fall, when things are beginning to get a little more difficult, right? And Hashem is going to protect them. 
Hashem never withdrew those clouds. Pardon? Even when, even when Hashem was uh, angry at... Uh, Correct. Correct. It is the reason why... Uh, remember, Hashem... I, I, made, I gave a talk on that... Arbaim uh, Shana Kut Gedor. It's fine. That uh, Hashem was expecting and hoping that they would actually come around even during those 40 years when mm -hmm. he told them, you're not going into Eretz Israel, you're a terrible people. Da, da, da. So he thinks that they've arrived at the point of no return. Remember that talk? Mm -hmm. so, so in fact, the, the fact that he still hovered with them day and night with his clouds of glory during those 40 years showed actually an intimacy like a parent. And he was just hoping that uh, despite the fact that he was angry with them and told them his decree, they would come around and then he would accept them. Okay, that's my theory anyway. Okay. Right? Now let's talk about the other opinion. You remember, there's one person who says that Sukkot are the hug crowds of glory or fire at night, right? There's another opinion that says that it is, Hashem says he wants you to remember, sitting in the sukkah, because he wants you to remember that I had your parents, your forefathers, sit in sukkah, sit in the same sukkah that you're sitting in, and I had them sit in the sukkah for 40 years. Why do we have to remember that? So he's going to mention that, according to that opinion. Got nothing to do with the cause of glory, the sukkah. Why do we have to mention that? So therefore, we do that in the beginning of the winter because of the cold, like people who are camping in general. You have to protect yourself. So you put these, these uh, things. That's why it's at this time. What are they supposed to remember? I know we have to get out of here. They should remember that they were in a desert and they were not in an habitation place. And they did not find any city. They didn't have any place to find shelter. For 40 years. And God was with them. And they lacked for nothing. He took care of them. So when we sit in the sukkah, we're trying to remember not that we're supposed to go from the house into hardships, but we're supposed to feel like here we are protected by the sukkah, it, and we try to remember a day when we were in the desert and there were winds blowing and there were sandstorms and there was no food and we didn't have any houses, and Hashem, and we lived in these tents, not because the tents are so important, but that reminds us that Hashem is the one who actually took care of us in that, in that terrible place. So the sukkah in the first opinion, is the sukkah itself is supposed to remind us of the clouds covering us. The second opinion is, the sukkah is just trying to give you like a theater, you know, a prop, to make you feel, oh, I remember now, 40 years in the Midbar, we were vulnerable, and all we had was this shaky little sukkah protecting us from the elements, right, and from wild animals and whatever, and somehow we survived. How do we survive that? Oh, God must have taken care of us. Two completely different ideas about the sukkah, right? Mm -hmm. One of them, the sukkah, is actually a negative in a way, right? It's supposed to show you how it could have been horrible because of the sukkah, because of this frail sukkah. Mm -hmm. And then you remind yourself Hashem did it, which is not the sukkah, it's the Hashem, right? In the first opinion, it's the sukkah itself that is symbolizing the, the hovering cloud. So the sukkah says, oh, isn't this beautiful sukkah? Look at this. It reminds me of the, of the hovering clouds of glory. Two different dramatic ideas, you know? That connects with uh, in the beginning, in the Rishit, when, when the spirit of Hashem. Oh, like, Ruach Hashem rachefet al pnei amayim. No, okay, Ruach Hashem rachefet al pnei amayim. Hashem hovering over the waters. Mm -hmm. So after I that, they got rachef out of... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the Jewish people living in, the, in these... Uh, That's Tov Vavohu. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the Tov Avo. They were living in this wilderness and this. It's not bad. He created a people out of Tov Avo right. of the desert, right. like he created the universe out of Tov Avo in the beginning. Uh, not bad. That's nice. Poetic. Yes. Not yeah. bad. It was nine nineteen, gentlemen. So we did another topic <coughs> in not five minutes, but ten. Yeah, nine minutes. Beautiful.